those. Uh, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'll just read uh, 1 through... Uh, we'll read 1 through 6. Now this... I was not going to preach on this tonight, but God just wants me to read this right now. We've all heard it. We've all probably talked about it, but we're going to read it. Let's all stand as we read this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. And this is the one that keeps, I'm going to say slapping me in the face, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Amen? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Who would like to lead us in a word of prayer and we can be seated? Anybody? Go ahead. I want to tell you that until December the 12th of 2016, until I was born again on that day, December the 12th, 2016, I had no understanding of what these verses talked about. And by no means am I going to stand up here and claim to be a saint or say that I haven't made some wrong decisions in my life or some, some, even some wrong things since I've been a Christian. I'm not a saint. But folks, this, the virus that is, has scared so many Christians... Christians are not Christians is what is the point I'm trying to make. We should always trust and believe in God. God's going to see us through whatever we must face. Can we all agree on that? Now, there's, I understand there's people that's got breathing problems that might have asthma, might have COPD, whatever. I understand that. I'm, but there is willing able and healthy supposed to be Christians that won't step a foot in this church house because of the corona, but you run into them at Brooks Brothers two or three days a week. You run into them at the bank two or three days a week. You run into them at Walmart and the Lowe's when they could be here on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and they're not. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not no saint by no means, but I'm telling the truth. And that last verse right there Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What is that? I'm just an old redneck from Broadus. Let's read that again. Having the form of godliness. So they're acting like they're godly, right? They're making people think they're godly, right? But denying the power thereof. Do we as Christians believe that God's going to bring us through whatever troubles we go through? So therefore, we're not denying the power thereof, right? That's right. I was, I was speaking to someone here the other day. And like I said, I didn't want to get off subject, but God wanted me to share what I just shared right there. That's not even what my sermon point is about, what I just read. That's just something else that hit me while I was sitting there. I was speaking to somebody the other day about helping out in Sunday school, helping out in children's church, you know, uh, even I've even went as far as asking some people about singing specials, coming and singing in a choir. And the answer that I got was, I've done my time. I've done my time. Folks, let me explain something to you. In a Christian, the only time to be done is in prison. <laughs> all right? We're all Christians. Psalm 71 and 18, I read this the other night. Know also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not. 
until I have showed thy strength unto this generation. Do any of y'all in here think that this generation understands anything yet? Do you think, does everybody in here think that the generation at hand could still be showed some things? We're not done, right? Whether you're 25 years old or 80 years old, we're not done. Is that not what that verse says? Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Those are some strong, strong words, are they not? There is no retirement from service to God, but there are seasons of life that affect what kind of service we do. And I tried to think about how I was going to put that. Brother Don is a tremendous preacher of God. Amen? He's a, God, he's a man called by God to deliver a message to us. And whoever wants to hear it. Now, Brother Don probably don't need to be down there teaching no four and five year old kids. Just saying that. Am I right? <laughs> there's a season, there's a place for all of us in the body of the church, in the body of Christ. You see, do you see where I'm going with that point? So, I don't believe that there is any place in the scripture that suggests that we should retire from doing the Lord's work. However, there are definitely seasons of life that we should prepare for different changes that take places in the process. For us to quit altogether is bad, but to hang on to something that we're no longer able to do is also not good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this sermon, You Can't Quit, is what I'm going to name it. You Can't Quit. I told Brother Johnny... Before Brother Johnny walked up to me before church, he said, what are you preaching on? I said, I'm preaching on women wearing pants to church. I said, no, I'm just speaking. <laughs> Anyone and everyone that has ever attempted to faithfully serve the Lord to live a life that honors Christ has met continual opposition, disappointments, and discouragements. Have we not, everybody in this room? We've all been through something some kind of trial, some kind of tribulation or something. You know, uh, sometimes not only does God uh, cause the storm to stand, for us to stand stronger, He also causes the storm to get things out of our way. You ever thought about it that way? Sometimes He causes the storm to clear a path. Amen? These often become so severe and prolonged that we're often tempted to quit. Just throw in a towel. Give up the good fight of faith. Quitting is often the easiest course to take in these times, and too many often take the easy way out. I believe, and I'm sure that most of us believe, I'm 42 years old. I've been in church since I was five, four or five. And I've, I've been told ever since then that the coming of Christ is near. <laughs> it's coming. He's coming. And... Since Jesus was resurrected, the time's been near, right? <laughs> He's coming back again. The Lord's coming, draw, coming draws near. It is going to become even more difficult to live the Christian life. Do y'all believe that? It's going to be harder and harder for us to, to be Christians. I've said this from the beginning since I got saved and started bringing these messages. Being a Christian is hard. Amen? Being a Christian is hard work. It's hard to be a Christian. The wicked will seem to continue to prosper as their evils and injustice against the righteous continue to increase. It's just going to get worse. Uh, you see what's going on in other states. Uh, not to mention the things that's going on in other countries that you probably don't even ever hear about that you don't even know about. But the things that are going not... You know, when I was growing up as a child, my daddy taught me this. He said, son, if police officer stops you for speeding, it's yes sir and no sir. There's no sense in arguing with him. Listen, the generation that we have coming up right now has no respect for nothing they have no respect for law enforcement. They have no respect for God. They have no respect for their parents. They have no respect, period. 
And it's a generation that I'm scared is lost. I don't mean like lost, headed for hell lost, but done with. All we can do as Christians, as our family and our loved ones and our neighbor is tell them about Christ. That's all we can do. Because that generation is gone. They, they're, what, is that, what did that verse say when I first opened about uh, with, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good. How often, how, how much does that happen right now in Broadus, Texas? Despisers of good. They try to make good people bad because you go to church at Trinity Baptist or because for whatever reason you're bad. It's happening right here in our community. You try to do good, but somebody's going to make you out to be bad, make you out to be the bad guy. Am I right? Am I telling the truth? It's right here. So now you can imagine in these other, I should call them other countries, but these other states, <laughs> man, I guess because we're kind of, I don't want to call us the Bible Belt, but there still is some people around these there is still some good old country folk that ain't going to believe in burning no buildings down, burning houses. I don't know if it's they don't believe in it or they're scared they're going to get shot. Like Brother Don was preaching this morning. You scared of the rapture or you scared to die? That may be their problem too. They may be scared to die. But man, the lawlessness and the hatefulness and the, the, that's going on in other parts of this world, it's, it's, it's unimaginable. I'd have never thought it. The Lord would give us some challenge he gave the prophet Jeremiah when he was encountering similar circumstances. Jeremiah 12 and 5. Jeremiah 12 and 5. You have to forgive me, I normally have these marked. Jeremiah 12 and 5 says, If thou hast run with the foot, men, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? <clears throat> and if the, in the land... Where am I at? Maybe this partly explains the reason behind the great falling away. Talking about in 2 Thessalonians Thessalonians 2 and 3. Whoever wants to turn there can read that in just a minute. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Go ahead. And I'm, I'm going to add this in here. I'm telling you right now, Christian or lost, if you can't see that there's a great falling away happening in our nation and right now, you need to be down here at this altar praying about it because it's happening right now. You've got people hating people because of their skin color. You've got people hating people because of their, their uh, political uh, party they want to choose. You've got people hating people just because they can hate. It's going on right here. Right now, it's happening right now. Great falling away is happening right now. Nothing in the world can take place of persistence. Talent will not take place of persistence. How many people, all y'all been in church most of your life, grown up in church, how many people have seen someone with a talent that could be doing so much for God? Where are they now? Where are they now? Not being persistent. Genius will not. Unrewarding, unrewarded geniuses is almost a proverb. Education will not. Now, I'm not going to say that education is not good. Education is a good thing to have. Uh, believe it or not, I got a little bit of education. <laughs> but this world is full of educated idiots. <laughs> I mean, I hate saying it like that, but it is. It's full of educated people that want to tell you and me how we need to live our life as Christians that ain't got no more Christianity in it than that highway out there. Amen? Because they're educated. They can tell us what we need to be doing. They don't know nothing about this. This is the education that I need. 
This is the education that I needed. This is the education that I start. Listen, I was teaching Sunday school, leading singing, uh, bringing messages up here at church till at four thirty in the morning, right down here in a little bitty trailer house. God said, "Hey, hey, old boy, you're not saved. You're dying and going to hell." He did, and I got saved. I turned my life around right then, completely for Christ. I still sin. I still mess up. But do you want to know what has helped me? To not cuss, to quit dipping, to, to whatever. My kids. Amen, my kids. I want my kids in church. I want my kids to come to church when I'm dead and gone and they still have to live here in this old world. I hope they don't have to. I hope God has come back and got all of us. And my children don't have to live in this world. Because it's not going to do nothing but get worse. Persistence and determination alone are important. We won't read all of these verses, but I made some little side notes. We're going to look at some areas <coughs> where a resolve to be persistent in spite of increasing difficulties that will tend to worry us. Be persistent in following Jesus. Amen? Be persistent in following Jesus. Be persistent when others walk away. Amen? you got to keep moving forward. It's all right to, to, to look over your shoulder and make sure it ain't catching up with you, but you got to keep moving forward. Amen? When others mock the way we're teaching, the way we're teaching our kids, you know? How many times have you, have you heard, I can't believe you're going to make your kids get up and go to church. That's just ridiculous. It's a weekend now. they got to go to school Monday through Friday. Well, that's what's wrong with this world today. Because parents did not make their kids get up and go to church. Them kids see your parents drinking a beer, guess what's going to happen to your kids? They're going to drink a beer. Your kids start seeing you not come to church on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, guess what your kids are going to do? They're going to quit coming to church on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. You, you don't keep coming to Sunday school, your kids are going to quit coming to Sunday school. And then you get these phone calls wondering, Brother Joey, what can I do about my kids? Ain't nothing you can do now but pray. That's it. Ain't nothing you can do now but pray. It's all you can do. Kids are grown. They're going to do what they want to. And you have taught them. Amen? I'm not saying, hey, well, let me back up just a second. I was a drug baby. Becky watching drug me to church every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, every time the doors open. I strayed away myself. But being brought up and raised in that kind of a household, what did I come back to? It might have been 15 years later, but where did I come back to? The church house. I come back to Christ. Amen? Be persistent on your stewardship. Be persistent in times of poverty. Hey, even when we don't have nothing, we still got all we need. Amen? God. In times of opportunity. Hey, God has blessed this old boy right here more in the last year. I, I could talk all day on how happy and how blessed. Listen. I quit a job at the sheriff's department. All y'all know this, but I'm going to tell you again because I told God that he'd get all the honor and glory. I quit a job at the sheriff's department, went to work for the state, making half or less of what I was making at the sheriff's department. But I prayed about it, and God opened doors, and I had told God, God, me and Brother Don, they sat right here on this pew and prayed. We'd prayed back there. We'd prayed on the phone. If it's what God wants me to do, he'll open the doors. If he don't want me to do it, God will close the doors, okay? Took a job at the state. August the 1st, I'll be there a year. Took a job at the state. November the 1st was promoted to the assistant section supervisor for St. Augustine County. Hey, that money that I give up in the beginning by stepping out on faith, I got it back. Amen. Amen. Plus more. Not more money, but you know what I got? I got time. Now, how many older Christians have I heard in my lifetime say, man, I wish I'd have done this. Man, I wish I'd have done that. Man, I wish I'd have done this for Christ. I wish I'd have had more time. God blessed me with that time. Not only did God bless me with that time for church, God blessed me with that time for my kids, for my wife, for my family, to be with them, to teach them about God, to teach them about Christ. Sold a house we had in Joaquin. Guess what? Sold a house in Joaquin. Didn't even have another house to live in. <laughs> I got a wife and three daughters. Amen. 
So this is month number two going on number three, living in a travel trailer <laughs> with my wife and three daughters most of the time. But God has provided. Has it been tight? Yes. Has tensions got a little high? Yes. Has there been temper tantrums thrown? Yes, including me. I've been one of them. It's happened. But God has always prevailed. God's going to see me through because I have been persistent on making sure my kids was at church. I've been persistent on making sure everybody knows where I stand at work about God. Leading the prayers in the morning to our safety meetings. I stay persistent. Now, I'm, a, I'm human. I sin. Amen. I sin. But I'm also a Christian, which lets me know that I have to ask forgiveness of those sins. Amen. Be persistent in your witnessing. Amen. Oh, me. Everywhere. Now, y'all know that ever since I've started bringing these messages, hey, our attitude and our actions is one of our biggest witnessing tools. If you come around me all the time with the mully grubs and the... You're not going to want to have any kind of conversation with me. You're not going to want to talk to me. You're not going to want to have anything to do with me, right? Amen? Attitude. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> Got a blank paper. Does that mean I need where I need to stop? <laughs> Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Psalms 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they who dwell therein. You want to read that again? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they who dwell therein. Many times the world tries to tell the church that it has no right to bring our faith and our gospel into their arena. Whether it be the world of politics, the world of education, the world of entertainment, the world of false religion, etc. But according to the above verse, the Lord Jesus, who is the creator and owner of the universe, and all whom he has allowed to take up space here, has both commanded and commissioned his church to take the gospel everywhere. Amen? Amen? Take the gospel. No place can be off limits to the church. The Lord Jesus has all authority and that is all the right and authority we need as Christians. Amen? Do you believe that? Amen. Uh, to everyone, teach all nations who will, all, who will have all men to be saved. There's hundreds and hundreds of verses about must be saved and that all men must be saved in the same way and that's by Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen? That's the only way to get saved, right? <clears throat> Jesus commands we preach the gospel to every creature. In Acts 2 and 47, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That was in the first church in the book of Acts. You know, the, the people from the outside heard the, the, the music, I'm guessing, and their noises and their praises and all that, heard them and come just because of their attitudes. That's one thing it talked about in the book of Acts was their attitudes. Their Christian attitudes is what brought them to want to see what's going on. Jesus' coming is always imminent. Those who have heard the gospel and failed to respond will be doomed and damned after the rapture of the church. Did everybody hear that? After the rapture's happened, it's going to be bad. We must compel every creature every day to repent and turn to Jesus while they still have the opportunity to do so. The Lord has given His last day church so many ways of communication and transportation that were never before that were never before available to the church. We must take advantage of each of these numerous ways to spread the gospel. Now, I thought about as I was typing this, I thought about this because I've been on cruises and I've been to other countries and everything. And I said this as a joke way back when I found a McDonald's 
I think we was in Jamaica. Now, you can't go wrong with going to McDonald's in Jamaica. Let me tell you why. Because McDonald's tastes the same wherever you eat it. Whether it's in Jamaica, whether it's in Lufkin, Texas, whether it's in Wyoming, it tastes the same. So you can't go wrong eating McDonald's, right? <laughs> but what, what I was, the point I was going to make with that, there are parts of the world that have a McDonald's but no church. You thought about that? There's parts of the world that have a McDonald's but no church. Could you, could you imagine what would happen if you, could, if you could start spreading franchises of Baptist churches throughout the world like they did McDonald's? But you know why, you know why it don't happen? As bad as this is finna sound, it's the truth. There ain't no money in it. Amen? That almighty dollar. There ain't no money in it. That's why there's not one every place you see a McDonald's. The Lord has given His last day, church. Let's see, I done read that. There is no doubt in my mind that the Lord gave these inventors and pioneers their vision so that the church could have better means to move quickly and spread the gospel to a lost world. Do you realize with the touch of a couple of buttons with that right there, I can send messages to wherever. Amen? And do you realize how many people that you can witness to on Facebook? But do you realize how many people can get the wrong attitude of some of the stuff you say or the wrong... Uh, Ma'am? Yeah, of what you say or post on Facebook. Amen? It's hard being a Christian. <laughs> Sometimes one of the hardest things that's for us to do is that. <laughs> just stay out of it. Just, just <laughs> leave it alone, right? I want, I'm, I'm going to change. Keep on in spite of your feelings or frustrations. Keep moving forward. Uh, even if you get your feelings hurt, somebody said something to you that might have been out of the way or you overheard what you thought somebody might have said, keep moving forward. Because my job leading to singing or Brother Don's job is bringing us a message is to not make everybody happy. You understand what I'm saying? It, and I may say some things. You may hear me say something or have talked something that you thought I said or took it in the wrong way. I didn't mean it that way. But that might, what I'm saying is if you get your feelings hurt or you heard somebody said something or you think you heard somebody said something, keep moving forward. Because me or Brother Don saying that or Brother Barry saying that or Brother Billy Joe saying that or Brother Terry, not going to keep you from heaven or hell. That's your decision. You can't use that as a crutch about what somebody said or what you think somebody said. Keep on though, have you, though you have been forgotten. Keep on as though you have been forgotten. He, like Joseph. Was Joseph not forgotten? Amen. We've got to keep on like Joseph. Keep moving on. One day we'll be remembered. Amen. Keep on though you've been forsaken as was Jesus. Keep moving forward. Keep on though you have failed, as did Peter. Keep on in spite of fears and foes, as did Paul. Keep on though thrown in the fire were the three Hebrew children. They kept on, didn't they? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? They kept on. Keep on through all the pain, knowing your labor is not in vain. Amen. Knowing it's not in vain. Listen, folks, a lot of times we want to stand up here and praise God and, and give our praise reports when everything goes good. Amen? We don't, sometimes we don't want to step out on that faith and praise God before it has gotten good. Right? We don't, when, when we don't know what's going to happen, when we don't know what, what's about to happen or go on, we have a hard time stepping off and praising God. Do we or do we not? For the unknown. 
<coughs> I'm gonna go, I got, look there, I got, I'm almost done. <laughs> but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, see also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now I did this kind of in a now and then. As a, do you call it an analogy? Is that the right word I'm looking for? Then the, wicked, the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every intent, the thoughts of his heart, was only evil continually. Now, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. A time of great violence and corruption. Then, now this is Genesis 6 and 11. I'm sorry, I didn't read the verses to you a while ago. The first one was Genesis 6 and 5. The second one was 2 Timothy 3, 12 through 13. Then, Genesis 6 and 11, the earth was corrupt before God and was filled with violence. This is Genesis 6 and 11. Now, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiven, slanders. And all of those things we already talked about. That's going on now. Am I, am I not correct? Am I right? A time of ineffective witnessing. Noah was a preacher of righteousness who, righteousness who walked with God. Yet after all his years of witnessing of the grace of God, the only converts he had was his own family. The masses were unconcerned about the things of God then as they are now. Am I right? People are unconcerned about God. They could care less about coming to church. They could care less about bringing their kids to church. Right? That's what was going on then before the great flood. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And now, I did not know until the flood... <clears throat> And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. See also will the coming of Son of Man be. The two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other one left. Watch therefore, for you do not work, you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. Comparing these two passages, we see the period immediately prior to the flood and conditions of our Lord said would exist at the time of His return are quite similar, can we not? Folks, you need to start praying. You need to start praying for your family. You need to start praying for your kids, your grandchildren. And if you hadn't done it in the past, start setting the best example for them people as you can right now, starting today, starting tonight. Have prayer with them at supper. Pray with them. Ask for forgiveness with them. Start it now. For your children and grandchildren's sake. Wrecking this, all Christians should trim their lamps, for the bridegroom cometh. Amen. That's all I got. Yes, sir.